My name's Dr Matt McGurr and I'm a scientist working in the research and development department at RB. RB is an international company that makes a range of health, hygiene and home care products. My name is Dr Louise Taylor and I'm also a scientist working at RB in the research and development area. The role of research and development in RB is to understand what the consumer wants and needs and find a way to deliver a product to meet that need. Today we're talking about a health product which is sold around the world, Gaviscon. This is an acid reflux suppressant that provides relief from indigestion and heartburn. Heartburn is a painful condition caused by the hydrochloric acid naturally present in your stomach escaping into your food pipe, also known as the esophagus. Hydrochloric acid has a pH of 2, so this process, known as acid reflux, can cause extreme discomfort. Traditionally, heartburn is treated with an ant acid. That is something to neutralise the acid. It can take the form of magnesium hydroxide. This can neutralise the hydrochloric acid in an acid-base reaction to produce a salt plus water, thereby reducing the concentration of acid in the stomach. However, there are problems with this technique. The stomach is meant to be acidic in order to break down food and to give some defence against bacteria and viruses. By reducing the concentration of the stomach, we reduce the defence. Also, the stomach will react to the neutralisation by producing more acid. Therefore, the effect is only temporary. Gaviscon works differently to an antacid. It contains three main ingredients, sodium alginate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, also referred to as bicarbonate of soda, and calcium carbonate, also referred to as limestone. Together, these three ingredients work differently to an antacid. The sodium alginate is the salt of a carboxylic acid, which means the sodium alginate will behave similarly to ethanoic acid. As a weak acid, some dissociation occurs to form HCOO-. This negatively charged molecule then links together in chains via Ca2 plus from the calcium carbonate also present in the stomach. This forms a barrier or raft inside the stomach. The calcium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate react with the hydrochloric acid to form salts along with water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide in the raft causes the raft to float to the top of the stomach acid, thereby stopping the acid from travelling up the esophagus. The alginate raft can be demonstrated simply and effectively. The conical flask represents the stomach, the acid represents the stomach contents, and the neck of the flask representing the esophagus or food pipe. We add 10 centimetres cubed of Gaviscon. After a short time, you can see bubbles of carbon dioxide forming on the gelatinous raft causing it to float to the top of the stomach, forming a plug. At this point, we can invert the flask to show the raft stopping the stomach contents escaping. When testing Gaviscon, scientists try out the experiments in a glass beaker first, i.e. what would happen if the stomach were simply a glass laboratory beaker. As well as doing calculations, they often do experiments in vitro, meaning in glass, as this is obviously easier than doing them in vivo, meaning in life. For both calculations and experiments, this can be helpful as a model, but scientists must be careful when applying their results to real life situations. I really enjoy working in science, as there's always the element of working with the unknown. What's really satisfying is once we've overcome the challenges, the direct results can be seen in the form of a finished product which can be bought by millions of people all around the world. For me, the exciting thing about working in science 
is understanding the problems that people face in their everyday lives and using chemistry to develop products to help solve these problems.